Welcome everyone to that kind of nerd's coverage of Game of Thrones. Today we are talking about the episode Beyond the Wall. This is officially your spoiler alert. If you haven't seen it, don't don't listen to this. Also, I would like to know what rock you live under because I would like to rent a room. Uh, I am joined this week by Brian Thornton. Unfortunately, Josh went beyond the wall and we haven't seen him yet. So I hopefully we'll we'll come back. Uh, I'm sure I, I got to ride my dragon and get, get, go get him. Oh, please. Yeah. Actually, as soon as uh, we're done recording, I'll get him. If we know anything about how time travel works in Game of Thrones, you will be back before this episode is actually over. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. So I, I do want to start with a, a little bit of the, the criticism that people are giving this episode so I can tell everyone to shut up. So listen, I don't care that, I don't care that people can run real fast to the wall. We don't know how far they were away from the wall. Let him run to 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 descend the ravens. Number two, I don't give a crap that ravens apparently have the flight of of a dragon. I now, do they fly like an African European swallow? Doesn't matter. I don't care. Or oh, okay, the dragons. The, 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 what if it's carrying a coconut? Listen, you couldn't possibly have a one ounce sparrow carry a two pound coconut. I don't care that crows are basically telecommunications for Game of Thrones, and I also don't care that you think that because the dragons are flying that Daenerys would fall off with hurricane winds. There's a couple things that you nitpickers are missing. There are zombies, dragons, and and other magic happening within this universe. Stop trying to ground it in goddamn reality and just, just enjoy the show. Also, there was not a truck in this episode. If anyone tells you there's a truck... In the in this episode, you smack him on the face real hard because there was the hell is telling you there's a oh truck my god in this there was episode. a picture that uh, it's been circulating the internet and I've been doing my best to show everyone what an idiot they are of it looks like someone snapped it goes oh look what they missed there's a truck beyond the wall and there's actually a truck in this mountains it's from the after show where they talked about like oh the location that we're shooting today and where we are there was a truck in the shot and someone snapped it and just did some clever photoshopping and boom we have a viral image there was not a truck. In this goddamn episode, I can't keep telling people that they're wrong. It doesn't work. Anyway, those are my grievances. Enjoy you the show. Did you see the, uh, the interview with the guy who plays Sam? No. He, he does this interview. I think it was at Comic-Con. Not this past year. Maybe last year. And he's like, you know, people come up to me all the time. And just, they're just like, Sam is doing all this walking and everything. And why is he still? He should be losing weight. <laughs> Sam's like. You're watching a show with dragons and magic and flaming sh- snores, and you're worried about how how fat I am. <laughs> like, I don't get it. People. I don't get it at all. All right, so you didn't come to to listen to us bitch about me yelling about people on the internet. You came to hear about the episode Beyond the Wall. So let's uh, let's start with uh, the places where we only spent a little bit of time. Let's start with Dragonstone. What happened really was a good scene between uh, Danny and Tyrion. Talking about, uh, you know, the, the line of succession. Hey, listen, you were risking your life out last week on the battlefield, and we don't have a plan in place if you die. And if you die, the whole movement goes with you, and we need to focus on that. And Danny's reply is, we'll worry about that when I'm wearing the crown, right? She's emphasizing, listen, you are, mm. I don't know if you're trying to throw yourself up into the running to, to take over. I don't know what the motives are, but to be honest, you're talking like you know we've already won, or you're talking like you're not focusing on where we are right now. You're talking like I'm already dead. Right. Is really what he's talking about. And, and you know, uh, if Tyrion brings up a good point, because then immediately afterwards, it's, hey, grab your, your frozen clothes and let's go fly off into, you know, the, beyond the wall. Uh, and of course, we where did she get her winter fashion clothes? By the way, she spent all this time in the desert. <laughs> Part of me hopes that there's just a closet full of like clothes that she could wear, almost like a Zelda outfit. Oh, if you're going to the fire region, you need uh, the fire clothes, so we'll have that. If oh, mo- most snow. definitely, yeah. Uh, so I'm hoping that's the case. But uh, who knows? Again, stop picking, <laughs> picking. Okay, this is a show I'm about just, walkers I'm and dragons. I'm just curious. I'm just poking fun at. This uh, but point. you're right that he bring. You know, she really says, "Hey, you're you're acting like I'm dead." What did you think about that? Because their relationships has seemed a little strained over the last couple episodes. Is this is this something that's going to build to something bigger, or is this her just not understanding his motives? No. I, well, I, I think oh, we're already at crazy prediction time. Okay. Um, I think I'm just it, asking in that scene. Did you think that was I, I, I'm with you? I'm I'm with you here. All right. Um, I think in, in that scene, she doesn't truly understand um, what Tyrion is worried about because she's never had to think about it before. 
She's always been Khaleesi, and no one's ever... She's never lost a battle. She's never been in a, a war this big and against this big of an enemy. So she's never seen defeat or her death as a viable option. And Tyrion, who spent plenty of time on the short end of the stick... Huh, see what I did there? I did, yeah. Um, you know, he he's he's trying to be pragmatic and realize that this could happen. And if it happens, everything that everybody who's followed you is fought for is gone. And what do they do then? They're just going to get taken over by, you know, the Lannisters and then abused and, and everything that you fought for will have died. Um, I don't think Danny really understands it. I think it's going to take Tyrion's death to make her understand it. Yeah, and they also have the the conversation about meeting with uh, Cersei, and Tyrion points out that Cersei is just you know, always a step ahead. She's probably laying some traps. We need to be doing the same thing, and we really need to, to focus on this. And and she really kind of quips at him. And she's that, just like, oh, yeah, where are your traps? <laughs> but also, like, hey, you really seem to be thinking about your, your family's perspective. I thought you were thinking about me. I, I really thought you were focused here, and instead you're again still focusing and talking about your family. There, there's a tension between Let, them, but let's face it, it it's the difference between Danny has not ever had to be or needs to be or has been a, a strategist, right? And Tyrion is nothing but that. He's the best but, strategist on the show. But Danny's trying not to plan for failure because if she doesn't, if she doesn't think it's going to happen, right? If you can get that thought out of your mind and focus on winning in her mind. That means you're going to win if you yeah, invite but, but negativity. This isn't the and secret. This is Game of Thrones. Like it, it, she needs to be realistic, and and I'm not saying she needs to come up with a line of succession right away, but she needs to. If she's going to be taking these big risks, she needs to think about that. And you know, she, she the, the other things that she she doesn't understand is you know the whole art of war, know thy enemy type mentality that Tyrion understands really well. Right. She doesn't, you know, he's thinking, and he explains it to her, he's thinking about his family because that's how you win. You need to be able to think like them and know what they're going to do next so that you can plan what you're going to do as a contingency against whatever their contingency plan is. And Danny doesn't get that because she's never had to do it. And and the other thing that kind of feeds into Danny really not focusing on really what's happening and the reality that she's living in is when they're talking about... Uh, Jon Snow, they're talking about all the other men in her life, right? Um, she says, basically this, Danny is, is worried about Jon Snow, but trying to pretend like she's not worried about Jon Snow. And she says to Tyrion that these men and their bold heroics, right? Uh, and, you know, suggesting that, you know, they're just brash and, and they'll, they'll oh, go off they're just trying the to impress me. Right. And then Tyrion suggests, well, that's because, you know, you, you've got the hots for Jon, so that, that's why. And she says, and this is great, oh, no, he's too little for me. And then instantly was like, I just said that to a dwarf. No, I just said that to a dwarf. Yeah, uh, I didn't it, mean I didn't mean little. and Not in that way. I mean, you're little. But then but, here, here's the hypocrisy, right? She goes, these men and their bold heroics. And then, hey, uh, Raven came. Jon needs her help. I'm on a dragon. And and there's Tyrion yelling that you can't have the most important person in the world fly off to the most dangerous place in the world. And it's it's this thing that she's going to go ahead and, and risk herself for John after she just sat there and said, Oh, these people and the heroics, what makes th- her I different think, than the other rulers of Westeros? I think what happened beyond the wall is making her realize that Tyrion is right though. She 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 lost yeah. something huge doing that decision. No, she didn't die, but she lost a huge playing piece that she can she could have used and now whether she knows it or not it's in the hands of somebody else right so so uh before we we get into what happened beyond the wall let's spend uh, just a little time that in winterfell uh as the dragon is flying north let's fly north with it there's a lot of tension going on right now between sansa and Arya. at least all of the tension <laughs> and I don't know if you can cut this tension with a knife or if you're going to need a special Valyrian steel dagger or something. This is this is rough. Uh, they have the confrontation about the letter. And, you know, Arya, you know, makes a good point. You know, it's, uh, listen, I know that you were a young girl, right? And that you were scared and worried. But let's look at the, um, what, what is what is the young um the young the young girl's name what's her name she's a lord of the house lady she's, mormont lady mormont let's let, let's look at lady mormont are you going to sit there and tell her that i was just a little girl and i was scared that that little girl has more courage in her pinky than you did your entire body during that time you know i would have rather faced or to some extent now right and i would have faced death 
rather than try to betray my brother, try to betray, betray my dad. And she reveals the fact that she was there when Ned was executed. Mm-hmm. And, and she was able to watch the things. The first time that they're actually talking about this event. And the problem is I see both of their points of view. I see exactly where both of them are coming from. And I can't decide who I'm mad at. I can't figure it out. What did you think about that scene where they're they're talking to each other about that moment? I think I was right last week and Josh was wrong. So there's that. Um, I... I, I I'm, I agree with you, which where I see both of their points of view, but at the same time, like I want to agree with Arya because yeah, you, you don't you don't do that, you don't betray your family, you don't you know betray your father. And Sansa never really got the chance to explain that when she was told to write that letter, she was also told that that she would be saving her father's life right. if she did that. Otherwise, they were going to execute him, and then they went and executed him anyway. So she never really got a chance to explain that. But neither here nor there. I'd like to think that I agree with Arya, but in the same time, like if I was ever if if I'm in that position, probably would do what Sansa did. And I think everybody can agree. And um, <sighs> it's tough. It's really tough. The thing, though, that made it escalate and, and really kind of made me worry about what's happening with the Stark uh, you know, siblings here is when Sansa snaps, uh, you should be on your knees thanking me. We're standing in Winterfell again because of me. I suffered things you can't imagine and no, and you would never survive what I survived. And I'm just like, uh, first off, you don't know what your other, you don't know what your sister. Yeah, been you don't through. know what she went through. And didn't she say you like didn't do that? John did. And then she came back and was just like, oh well, the Knights of the Veil vale won in. The Knights of the Veil vale came because of me. Ah, I, I don't see. I don't know. Th- th- listen, if if Arya had to go through what Sansa went through, she'd probably be dead, right? And if Sansa had to go through what Arya went through, she would be dead. And and they're they're just trying to one up each other instead of actually talking and communicating. So as I like to call it, sibling talk, right? Because that's what siblings do. We try to one up each other, and we this is what we do. Uh, I, I just listen. Then they went into the room, <laughs> and, and we Sansa catch, found the faces. Catch Sansa kept snooping around, and we see the bag of faces. I kind of go on with John with. <laughs> I am on board with Josh's theory that right now Arya is wearing Arya's face. Right now she she is nobody being Arya. Uh, and there is something – like I want to believe that because I want to believe that she's just playing it to kill Littlefinger because Littlefinger is on her list. And, and, I, and I want her to be playing the game enough to know that sh- this is going to end with Littlefinger dying. But I, I really don't know. I just don't know. I think that's the beauty of this entire storyline, though, is that I, I don't think you're supposed to know right. until it happens. Um, I don't even think Sansa knows. I think I think Arya might be playing Sansa to play Littlefinger. I'm not. I mean, I'm sure she's upset and mad and and and, and feels all right. these things, but at the same time, because she's no one, she she doesn't have any more stake in the game either. So I think she might be using Sansa to kill Littlefinger because what does Sansa do immediately after she sends Brienne to King's Landing her protector so who's gonna swoop in and be like hey I can protect you baby it's gonna be Littlefinger and at that point Arya is gonna have Littlefinger right where he he wants him because Sansa's gonna see you know the the whole plan and and the shit show that Littlefinger is and Maybe this will be his chance to kill Littlefinger, and maybe she'll take his face and then be like, "Hey, we still have the Knights of the Veil because I can be <laughs> right, Littlefinger any time I want." I, I I hope so, and I I really do not like the choice of sending Brianna Tarth away. It's that's a bad move. I I mean, we're gonna see what happens with it. I don't want to speculate. Just bad move all around because that's that you don't want to be going to King's Landing right now. There's there's a lot of shit happening. You don't want to be going there. <sighs> yeah, well, I mean, sending Brienne was probably the smart idea because the Sansa went there. She'd be dead. And let's let's face it. If Sansa goes there, Cersei's going to kill her on the spot. No Cersei one, has no love for this girl. No one from the north should be going to the south. It shouldn't be happening right now. That no, shouldn't but be they happening. need to. But no, they, they don't. To. They do. If they're going to defeat the White Walkers, they need the Lannisters, unfortunately. Wait, 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 wait. Listen, Jon's crusade, Danny's crusade to, with the White Walkers to kill him? Yes, those two. No one from House Stark right now? Sansa, Arya, Brienne. Right, but but remember that letter came for John. I, I understand. I'm just saying and John's not there. No one so should they go. need to send somebody. 
I, I, uh, no, I they don't, don't think know you need that to. John's They're, with Danny right now. No, they don't because they they broke away from this kingdom. Cersei is not their queen. And this is obviously a trap. There's there's Admiral Akbar going everywhere. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. Oh no, someone's dying. So don't go because that's multiple the right people thing might to die. Do so anyway. It's a bad. It's a bad call by Sansa, and and it just it's a stupid move. You think Brienne's gonna die before he can? She can you know get get with his her ginger her ginger friend. I don't I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. I just think it's a dumb move all around, and she she got played. I just. I want to bring that up. Oh, maybe this will be the 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 kick in the pants that sounds and needs to realize, oh, maybe I don't know how to play this game as well as I thought I did. Right. All right. So I want to move now. Now that uh, it's oh, it's only been a few minutes. So now Daenerys has uh, is very close to the wall. So let's talk about what happened beyond the wall. And I want to start with one thing that everyone else noticed, too. A whole lot of red shirts just came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, Fine. Just just extra people. We're sitting there last week trying to predict who's gonna die out of like the core six of them. We didn't even realize there was like three extra people who would be like, <laughs> no, oh, dude, they're expendable. There's like three dozen people, man. There were like fifteen people that were just ready to just be Yep, it was just the, and they had hoods up and everything, and we're just like, oh, they're all they're all they're dead. All dead. They're, they're all dead. They're all dead. Um listen, I I really liked the uh the, the action in, in this episode. I really liked the action that happened north of the wall, loved the scenery. Uh, I thank you so much, Game of Thrones, for figuring out how to do walking through beautiful scenery, but having conversations that matter. Take take note for Peter Jackson. Just want to say that. And there's um, six movies too late. That's never happening. It's very true. But um, I really like the fact we got you know Ice Walker, polar bears, and some fun some action. But let's talk about the the characters and and what's happening. So so we have a, a lot of conversations going on. So John and Barrick are bonding over the fact that they've been resurrected before, right? You know. Uh, and that the fact that they've come back from the dead and the Lord of Light and all that warm, fuzzy stuff. And they're the only two people on this journey who have, have been resurrected. Is that correct? Right. No one else was has really been brought back from the from death. Well, before. the priest, the priest hasn't been resurrected. Just the right. The, the guy with the iPad. The iPads. Right. Exactly. Oh, so, you, mean, you mean him and John? Yes, they're talking. Okay. He's Beric. Yes, yes, yes. OK. Um, so John and Barrick, but no like, one knows John's been resurrected, r- right? Well, Barrick, Barrick knows. Well, Barrick knows, but I mean, because he can Cause just kind of tell because he, he knows things, uh, right? <laughs> I like the moment. <laughs> there's a there's a line that says, "What's the point in serving a god when no one knows what he wants?" Uh, and it just makes me think of George R. R. Martin when he's writing this. It's no one knows what he's going to do, what he wants, and how this is going to end. But we're just going to you know continue to go down this path and just do his bidding because this is the world that we live in. We also have the uh, – Gendry gets to finally confront everybody about his terrible past and being you know, sold to, to Melisandre and everyone tells him to quit his whinging, which I, I didn't I'm know. I'm assuming means whining. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I, I, or bitching, you know. They pretty much were like, "Yo, you want some? You want some cheese to go with that wine? Why don't you? Why don't you calm down, there, buddy?" <laughs> and they're like, it, "We got, we got Barrick over there. He's been killed six times. You don't hear him bitching about this, okay?" So like, let's let's yeah. calm down. Let's let it happen. Talked about the leeches and leave, and leave it to the hound to to be just like, shut the fuck up and just <laughs> get over it. <laughs> but but did you die? But did you die? And if yeah. you did die, it's, did it's, you come back the, from the dead? Then you're lucky. The did you die argument, exactly. But the, uh, a nice chat that I, I really liked was John and Ser Jorah because I was worried for a moment that John was going to lose the, the – that John was going to lose Longclaw and not have Illyrian Steel for this battle, which he clearly needs. Nah, Jorah's, Jorah's too big of a guy for that. He's too big of a man. I thought it was just very nice to have these two have a great conversation together and – Decide that John is worthy enough to keep the sword, right? And we learn that Jorah has really kind of made peace with the fact that he's brought dishonor upon his family. Uh, and it to me, it's it was one of those chats from just like, oh God, one of you was gonna die. So I was very disappointed when you know that didn't happen for it. There was a great bit of humor though, and I'm curious to hear what you thought about Tormont and the Hound talking about Brienne. Oh, Tormont. You know, it reminds me of that scene from Billy Madison. It's just like, hey, you know, we got it on once. You know, no, you didn't. Yeah, but you know, a friend of mine, he, he, him, and they, they, they really, no, they didn't. No, but it'd be cool if they did, right? Like, that was what that scene was. He was all like, hey, I got this girlfriend. And I was like, oh yeah. So, like, well, not really. But she's gonna be. It's like, gonna, okay, it's gonna happen. Sure. 
I like the conversation between Torman and John because they brought up Brian when you brought up last week, which and was I ben, felt validated. Ben sir. did the knee, and uh, and how that how that all went down, and, and, and how that he that he ended up dying for his pride, and how many wildlings ended up dying for this guy's pride. Yep, and yeah, I definitely think that is the turning point for John for what happens after the hullabaloo at the wall, because uh, there's a bigger picture, there's a bigger thing at hand, and and really is bending the knee that big a deal in the the grand scheme of things probably not all right so then we obviously have a little bit of fight but listen we get to see why this is a dumb plan and while i still don't think this is a smart idea of let's bring one white walker back with us this will be easy what could possibly go wrong now there's two things we kind of learned that apparently white walkers play by vampire rules right yeah uh, if, if the one who turned me if you kill him you kill all of them kind of thing. right but you, but you gotta remember like we talk about this like the entire army is white walkers they're, they're not the white walkers are the guys with the pale blue skin the blue eyes the generals and the rest of them are just army of the dead so like because I had I got into this argument with this person like, well, how come, you know, the other people could kill those guys? Like because they're not White Walkers because they're just the undead. So they uh, hello, I have a family and I watch closed captions so I don't have to wake up my children. They refer to as white, which is W.I.G.H.T. So they're referred to as the white. So. Right. So, I mean, they're just like a, a generic. And the white, the white are the people who are dead that get brought back to life most of the time. Like the polar bear. Like right? the polar bear. Like the polar bear. Um, they finally get one, and then, of course, it's the holy crap reveal that there is a more than an army coming, and this is where I was wrong. Gendry gives up his hammer to go run forest run uh, back to the wall, so... I, I'm sorry I freaked out a few people with the fact that I saw, thought that Gendry was going to die. Uh, and we get to see some some great action. And then, of course, we see the horde surrounding them. And we see the fact that apparently White Walker's not too keen on water. Uh, don't like don't like to. I don't to think anybody is too keen on freezing to death in a lake. But yet they do. Uh, and then, of course, the Hound has obviously never played a video game or a round of Dungeons and Dragons in his life. Uh, decides to antagonize the 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 dead. Uh, gives a wonderful four letter word when he realizes that shit has hit the fan, and then unleash the horde. What did you think of when you saw just the amount of dead and White Walkers surrounding this little tiny island? Well, I mean, I obviously was waiting for the other shooter drop. And when 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 the hound throws that rock, you're like, oh, no, why? Because now they know. Like, you could have at least tried. Like, you could have survived a couple more minutes slash days, however long it takes Danny to get there, if he had never thrown that rock. Because they all would have been like, oh, well, we'll just sit here and we'll starve him out or something like that. But, you know... It, it it was it was huge in scale. It was awesome, um, and I was extremely afraid for everybody there, including Jon Snow, because I I thought more people, more main characters would die in this episode. Yeah, I was. Re- I mean, at, at one point we see that you know, dude, I Tormont. I got so scared for Termont, dude, so scared. I was like, I was oh, like, this is the end. They just and yep. listen, they just had the whole thing about I'm going to go to Brienne and I'm going to you know I'm going to marry her kind of talk, right? That he gets yeah, every yeah, war. yeah. When I get home, you know what I'm going to do? And, then, and I was like, oh, he's going to bite the, it's going to bite the dust. He's going to bite the dust. He, he did just enough. And he, then, he got John to bend then, the knee, uh, and he was going to go to see Brienne. And I was like, oh no. And and then Hound X Machina, let me save yeah, you. Yeah, right. And apparently they don't play by traditional zombie rules that if you're bit or scratched, then you turn into one. Like no, you have to die. You have to die. You have so, to die. It's like it's like a vampire zombie hybrid, which I'm okay with. Um, and and the only person who didn't make it out, uh was Thoros, right? We had the the red priest uh was mortally wounded by the the polar bear from earlier in there. Um the action was was really great. I was on the edge of my seat waiting for someone to die. We got red shirts dying left and right. Uh and just when things looked bleak, boom, those two dragons came out. And great. um I noticed something. Just a side note again. And I know I just yelled at everyone for you know continuity and all that other stuff, but I noticed that Genarius flew with three dragons, but only two were north of the wall. 
No, all three of them were. I, I didn't see this third. I didn't see the third one. Whatever. Well, well, Rhaegar and Viserys, I think, is the yes. other one. They're, they're very similar looking. Well, Viserys. Well, okay. All right. So maybe that's what I missed. Yeah. Uh, and you know, listen, it's it's dragon. One to save is the green, d- and one is a very off green. Yeah. So they well, look pretty much the same. Uh, and they're in to save the day. And listen, dragons spitting fire, taking down walkers. I'm I'm pumped. I'm enjoying this, and that's when we see the White Walkers come over, grab that javelin, and I'm like, "Oh God, we're gonna kill, we're gonna kill the whole, we're gonna kill all of them." Like, we're, what are we gonna do? We take out Viserys right from the sky, and you can hear hearts breaking across the world when this dragon <laughs> just takes it down. What did you think, though? I mean, was was did you just see it coming? Were you surprised? I mean, I I did not see it coming. I well, I mean, I did because I had that theory about an ice dragon being hidden in the wall, but I didn't see it happening this way, and I I was sad. But I mean, I saw a bunch of tweets like uh, of you know people saying that the the Night King needs to join the the Winter uh, Olympics yeah, they, next time and all this other stuff. Right, that was all really good, but um. It's a couple millennia old. I think he's gotten really good at throwing these things. I, there was a couple observations that the people had noticed that there were three ice javelins, really, uh, with each of the White Walkers. There's three dragons, three ice javelins. That's that's pretty significant. Seems like the White Walkers are planning ahead. And while there's fast travel right going throughout the show, people are going all over Westeros very quickly. The White Walkers have been very slow because they can't cross the wall. They can't – I mean – there's no point in rushing them to the well, wall. Well, they can because, now. But now that they have a dragon, absolutely they can. Uh, and as soon as that dragon went down and went into the water, part of me really was like, oh, safe. At least at least they won't get the dragon. And yeah. Then, yeah. And yeah the I, chains, thought, I thought man. at least that they would stay at the bottom of the ocean. And then the chains uh, and just took him out. Uh, I, I, was, I was not surprised. I was surprised and not surprised at the exact same time. But this is exactly what we need, right? Uh, seeing the dragon die, seeing them all in trouble, having Daenerys realize that, man, she's not bulletproof. And the conversation I have with Tyrion really does matter. Maybe we do need to plan more. This raises the stakes. And in a way that a lot of people have been complaining about with this season, especially with this episode, that, listen, we had red shirts die here and there. We only had the red priest die within this episode. You know, we, at this point, they're thinking, oh, there's some characters who now just cannot be killed. And this reminds us that no one is safe in the Game of Thrones. Uh, and, and this is going to raise the stakes. Yeah, and I mean, there was actually legitimate fear that John died again, too. I mean, honestly, after he went into the water, yeah, we all knew he was going to come out. But he's he's got an entire army of White Walkers in between him and the wall. I mean, I thought for a moment, oh, maybe... Either he dies or he needs to, like, hide north of the wall for a long time. Now, I, I learned. My I wasn't mi- expecting Benjen to come back. I, I learned from our episode with Jamie going into a lake that you're coming out of the lake pretty damn quick and, and you're going to be fine. The Benjen coming out of nowhere, though, was not. Oh, yeah, he's dead. I just expected Daenerys would circle back. I, I mean, I really just thought that she would just be like, I, I, mean, I came back, second look. Yeah, I mean. Although I did see that, I, and I don't have no idea what this means, but I saw this video online, um, and apparently, as John is reaching out of the lake to grab Longclaw, did you see this? Is it the the eyes blinking thing? Yeah, what okay. the hell is that? It's been explained. Uh, it was just uh, water. Yeah, it was just water. And uh, you ever you ever been outside in a like a watery, salty environment? It's just yeah. basically just just build up on the hilt, and that was it. They're just like, hey, listen, you may have seen that, but it wasn't what you thought it was. The the the, the wolf did not blink. Okay. Yeah. So All right. I feel a lot better. Just about like that the truck, everybody, you're reading a little too far into things. All right. Don't worry. Good, good, good. Uh, it would be cool, but no. Uh, and I don't even know what explanation there would be behind that. People are looking for anything that's connected with Three-Eyed Raven and magic stuff. And, and listen, Benjen X Machina, great, cool. I mean, I, I, do you think Benjen's dead? Oh, absolutely. All right, I think, I don't know how, but Benjen has been surviving north of the wall for so long, I think he's still alive somehow. I don't know how, but somehow he's still there. Not for long, but I think somehow he's still there. Okay, I don't agree with you, but okay. All right. You are allowed to have your theories. (laughs) It's fine. Just listen, just my little thing. So let's talk about the end of the episode because we have this moment between, uh, you know, 
family, I can say. You know, John and, and Danny are, are on the boat. And then we learn that really that calling her Danny is weird. No one calls her Danny in the show. I call her Danny, and that's all that matters. We all, the whole world that's, calls that's her Danny. That's how close we are. But she's just like, yeah, that's kind of weird. You know, I, I don't. Uh, I don't like Danny. You know, it's just a nickname. I, I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, and the only people who really called it are really awful people. You know, like my yeah, brother. Didn't she say her brother called her Danny? Yeah, my brother called okay. me Danny. People that sold me into slavery called me Danny. You know, the Dothraki at first. You know, they're pretty bad people. Um, so I just realized that it's kind of a, a nickname that she doesn't like. Uh, and that brings up terrible things. It's like people calling me Chris. And if you call me Chris, I will hunt you down. I will find you. And you are going to meet some White Walkers. But finally, John bends the knee. Well, not really. Well, not physically, but he tries. Metaphorically. What did you think about that moment? Did you think this was actually going to happen? I didn't think it was. No, I, I said I thought it was going to happen. I n- said it needed to happen. I, I was very adamant last episode arguing with Josh that John needed to bend the knee. And now John has finally seen how much Danny cares and how what ca- she's capable of. And yeah. Absolutely. Like the North will for, will forgive me for bending the knee to a girl with two dragons and, and you know, a heart of solid ice gold, whatever. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I was extremely happy when it finally happened. And then my next thought was, oh, they're going to fuck. and It's going to be weird. <laughs> listen, we've talked about how listen, incest is a weird thing on this show. Uh, a lot of people are rooting for it right now. Um, when you start season one, you're like, ew, incest, gross. And then now you're just like, God, I kind of hope they do it. Um, so complicated feelings aside, there's obviously a lot of spark, a lot of chemistry, uh, between them, but overall impressions of this episode, Brian, again, a lot of people have mixed emotions. How did you feel? I thought this was one of the best episodes in the series. I love this episode. I also think that, um, it sets up so much stuff that we won't be able to see till 2019, which is very sad. I really wanted this dragon that the, 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 the White Walkers are controlling to be John's dragon, but I think it's pretty clear that he will eventually ride Rhaegar because that's the name of his dad. Right. But I do think this dragon is going to try to burn him and he's not going to burn. And that's how they're all going to kind of figure out that he is Targaryen. Um, you don't think Bran's going to help this out at all? Bran's no. going to be like, hey, by the way, it's letting you know. Listen, John's not going back to Winterfell anytime soon. Bran's in Winterfell. He's not really like going to have much contact. He's not going sure. to King's Landing. Sure, sure. Uh, I mean, we have one more episode, which looks like it's pretty much just all of these people in King's Landing, and Cersei is probably going to try to kill them all, and they're not all making it out alive. I'm looking at you, Tyrion, as much as I love you. And um, after that, we, it, we're going to have to fight the White Walkers, and you know, it, it's. I don't see Bran having to shed any light on this. I think Danny's suspicious. I think Danny sees something in him that could be Targaryen-ish, but I think it's going to be confirmed when a dragon tries to light John on fire. Uh, as I said with this episode, it did help raise the stakes. Uh, even though that we don't have a lot of main characters dying, had a lot of red shirts take the hit this episode. Um, you know, the fact that we now have uh, the White Walkers with the dragon is going to to put some stress on things. Um, I think John bending the knee really complicate things in the north, especially when he returns. A lot of people are going to turn to Sansa, so I'm really curious to see how they do that. However, overall, going north of the wall to get a White Walker to convince Cersei is a dumb plan for two reasons. Number one, this, for many reasons, actually. Number one, it was stupid. All right. Number two, we lost a dragon. Number three, we killed a, a red priest, so that person's gone. And number four, Cersei already has someone back from the dead. She's got the mountain. She's not going to care that north of the wall we can do this. So unless the mountain can somehow factor in with his red eyes to fight blue eyes, I don't think she's going to care. I don't think she's going to care either, but I think Jamie's going to. Right, but... I think I, Jamie, I think Jamie's going to at least take some of the Lannister's troops to help them. He cared when Tyrion came and said, hey, shit's right. going bad. Right, and which is why I'm thinking that just more more nails in the coffin of Jamie 
leaving Cersei and joining the rest of them. There's only uh, one episode left to Game of Thrones. We are definitely really excited to cover the finale and love to hear your thoughts on this season so far. So please reach out to us on Twitter at that kind of nerd on Facebook. Just search for that kind of nerd as well. Uh, thank you so much for making us your walk around your neighborhood or your drive to work. Enjoy Game of Thrones tonight. We will see you all next week. 